Need race. Ace Fight Studios has race. Hey guys, Alexei from Ace Fight Studios, and this tutorial is MoGraph 101. Hopefully, this will be a series where we'll be talking about how to use MoGraph to animate and build things in Cinema 4D. Um, this first part will just be about the cloner object, uh, effectors, fields, and how they interact with each other. Just some basics, and then we'll get into actually project based education in the next couple of videos. So, the first one, we're going to use this number five, but you can use any mesh you want. It's useful to have a mesh which you can tell where it's the front and the back. Uh, let's just put it into a cloner. Um, if you see my interface here, you'll see that my cloner and my effectors and my fields are separate. In the standard layout, it's kind of like this, which I think is more confusing. They've color coded them, but um, you get confused which one's the cloner and they're not, I think they're more logically grouped like this. And you can just go edit palette or customize palette and you can just drag them around wherever you want to set it up the way you like. So that's how I have it set up. So the clone object is here. We Alt click on it and it'll become apparent. And instantly we will get uh, this little grid and you can click these little yellow buttons to move them around. Uh, now here you have this mode option. As you can see here is object, linear, radial, grid and honeycomb. Yours will probably look more like this, but I honestly, I don't like it. I prefer when I can just do a quick tap radio and just quickly switch between linear, radial, grid, honeycomb, etc. So let's go with linear for the time being. We're going to go over the others later. And let's set this to zero. And these, see this one, it'll drag it out. You decide in which direction it clones. So we're like, no, we want Z. There you go. We want our clones to be like this. And we want more of them. We want ah, seven, I think, will be enough for now. So as you can see, we have the object inside the cloner and it gets cloned. Let's turn off the cloner for a second. Let's copy this guy, just control drag him. So we have two of them. And let's delete this material on him. And let's just move him slightly back. So as you can see, now we have an object with two different sides, a white one and a pink one. Now, if we press, if we turn on the clone now with the two objects inside, you will see now it iterates, it goes pink, white, pink, white. So if you're ever making steps or something or where you want to iterate, you can just do this to have objects of different colors. And obviously you can have many of them, you can have three, four, and they will just cycle through them uh, when making, so for each clone, we'll take them in that order. Uh, but let's say we want them together, we want them as one object. So what you want to do is you want to make them into a null. So select both of them and press Alt-G. And now when you turn the cloner on, now you have the actual object because the cloner looks at the top level. Uh, so for example, if we copy this null in here and we move this object here to the side, you'll see that now we have two different nulls. We have one null where it's offset and one null where it's not. We can even you know, move it up or whatever it is. And as you can see, this is one type of object. Like if we turn off the cloner, you'll see that we have these two nulls. We have this, and then we have that. So that's how it works. It always looks at the top level children under the cloner. Let's delete this guy for a second. We don't really need him. So we have this clone. And it's important to uh, also remember where this null is, where the, ax where the origin is because that affects how we're, how it clones them. So let's start with effectors. Um, the next one here is purple one. If you click and hold it, you have effectors. The easiest way is just let's select the random effector. As you notice, for example, right now, nothing happens. That's because we didn't have the cloner selected. For an effector to have an effect, it has to be inside this effectors list here. If you create an effector while your cloner is selected, it'll automatically get put into this effectors list. So as you can see, this random effector uh, in this parameter section, it decides what random example. I want the position to be random. That's a default. So we can, we can decide how far random each is. So this is how far it is from its origin. We can also have random rotation. And see here, this is where the axis is important. Because see right now, you can see that when the randomness is happening from this point. And this point is actually, if we turn this off, is there. See, its origin, its axis is right there. If we move these two objects to the middle and we go to this top one, you'll see that 
uh, that's where the origin axis is. And now you'll see that they're rotating around the center, see? You could also just get this null and you can change its axis with the axis tool and you can move it up. And now you will see that the randomness is happening from the top. So it's like hanging on a string. So it's very important to consider where your axis is of the children of the cloner because it will affect how they animate. So let's move this axis back. Oops. Axis and move it back to the bottom. Let's turn off the random one so we can see where it is. There you go. And that's the bottom of the five. And let's also um why are they so low now? Let's just move the whole cloner up a bit. There you go. Now, so this random effect. Now, every effector, uh, there's a lot of effectors, but let's go with just with one, has a field section. And the field section lets you limit the effect of this effector. So let's go to random and let's change some more. Let's change the scale as well. In the scale, you will see that you can change uh, either of them individually, so the y, x axis, or you can press uniform and then it will scale them proportionally. So let's have this example. This is how our random scale works right now. And let's go into fields and let's add a spherical field. Spherical field. And we can scale this field up. And now you can see that the effect only happens inside the sphere. Once the sphere leaves, the effect goes away. See, they're all uniform. And these two circles are the effect uh, area. Now let's delete this guy to make it a bit easier. Let's make a plane effector. A plane effector basically just does one thing to all of the objects. So in this case, it moves everything up by 100. Um, let's move it a bit more so it's more obvious. And let's go to fields again. And let's add a linear effector this time. A linear effector will affect things so everything to the right is affected, everything to the left isn't, so along the x-axis. And you can rotate it, and then it'll affect everything behind it the other way around. And you can stretch out these falloffs so you have a more gradual falloff of things going up and down. And you can change these fields when you have it selected. You can change it to any of the other fields. So you can change it to a box field. And then you have a little box. And yeah, the falloff as well. Uh, here we can see that the falloff seems to have... Why isn't the falloff not visible? Switch back to the spherical field. The fall of just, ah, oh, there it is, yeah. So basically inside this will be 100% and outside will be, sorry, will be zero, 100% and then it'll fade out. So you can decide on how far you want the fall off to go. Um, yeah, so similarly with the box thing. Now, the next effector I want to talk about is the step effector. So like this guy. Let's make a step effector. Step effector. Now, the step effector will just uh, modify things along each index. So with each one, it'll increase the strength of it. So for example, this is a scale from 0 to 1. But we can also do, for example, rotation. And we can see and they rotate more as it goes on. Make it more obvious, we can increase the number of clones. Also, here you can increase the number of clones and you'll see they go further into space. But if you like the distance your clones are at and you just want more of them there, you can change this from per step to end point. And then as you can see, that's the end point. So this is how far they go. And then we can just increase the density of them, see? And then the step effector rotates them by 97 degrees towards the end. So you can have these nice effects. The other thing a step effector can actually do is it can, I mean, all the effectors can offset animation. So for example, let's turn off our rotation. Let's say here, let's place a bend deformer here. Um, let's move it here. And let's keyframe the strength to 200 here, and then say flame 35. Let's make it zero. And as you see now, if we, pre if we play in the timeline, you'll see they animate all together. Now let's add some, a bit of overlap to this. So 
Shift F3 for the timeline, and let's just control click to add a bit of this kind of. There you go. Just so it has a bit of, <laughs> uh, what's the word? Spring in it. See, we play them, and they spring, maybe. There you go. And let's hide this guy a bit. There you go. And what the step effect can do, you can actually offset your uh, animation. It's called time offset. So you can scroll this up forward, for example, or back, depending on how you like it. And now when you press play, oops, no, let's scroll it forward. So 25 frames. See, and now they all open up in this kind of... And the more you do it, the more it'll offset them. So if you increase 115, you'll see they all take turns. And the cool thing about this is you can actually uh, change the effect of this effector. So let's go back to our, let's turn off our time to zero for a second. Let's change our scale. As you can see now, it goes from zero to one, from one end to the other. And here we see this effect, this is how much it affects. And if you lower this, you'll see that it doesn't affect it, or maybe even goes negative. But if you hold the control button, you can add a point here, and you can move this guy down. Oops. You can adjust this. And you can see that now in the middle, they have the most, they have 100% effector of this effector, <laughs> effect of this effector, and at the bottom, not so much. And see how right now they overlap? We can also combine this with, say, a position or a position, and we can, there you go, we can also move them forward like so. So we have this uh, ability to change it. And the reason I brought it up now is because the same thing applies to animation. Before the animation was offset in a row, but if we turn this off now and we bring back our animation offset, click 90, you will see that it actually animates from the sides and in. So that's pretty nifty. And if you want, you can change this. You can go flip uh, vertical, and now it'll fold from the beginning. So this way you can offset any animation the object has inside the clone room. Very handy. Now, what do we have next? Ah, yes. Let's get rid of the step effector and get rid of the bend. Let's go back to our... Let's reduce the amount of these. I don't need so many. Let's go back to our plane effector, which moves things up. And let's make him linear field. And let's animate this field. So on frame zero, it's going to be here. So I just hit the shortcut for keyframe, which I think is F9. Yep, it's F9. And then you just move across to say frame 40 and you move it across and you put another keyframe. So now you have this linear field animated through the scene, animating the numbers. Maybe it's a bit too fast. Let's put it on to 60. There you go. But as you can see, the numbers kind of move in a very boring way. They just move up and that's it. There's an easy way to do this. You can add overlap and stuff. So in your cloner, let's select the delay effector. And this delay effector, see it already smooths them down. But what you can do is you can switch it to spring. And then they each have a little spring. And you can increase the strength of this effector and it'll affect how much springiness you have. And of course you can add other parameters. You can add rotation. We can add scale. So you have all these things you can do. And you can obviously invert these. And yeah, handy stuff. The next one is the time effector, yes. Time, oh, it's also really, sorry, with this, it's really important to have in the effector list, have a delay effector at the end. If the delay effector is first, it won't do anything. It has to be, it only affects the stuff above it in the stack. So that's the order of operations here. You need to have it at the end. Uh, the next thing I want to do is there's also this thing called time effector, which is pretty handy. And did we add it? No, we did not. The time effector basically just affects uh, over time, it just does one of these things. So, for example, here it rotates 90 degrees. So if we press play, it'll just keep rotating as the as the timeline goes. Very convenient. Um, yeah. 
You can also set it to position, so you can have it just constantly moving away or constantly moving up. So it's just a good way to, I usually use it for slow rotation. If you just have something in your scene that you need to be slowly orbiting or whatever it's doing, just floating somewhere in space. I'll give you an example. Let's add a random effector and random. And let's go to max out these positions. Now, see, look, see the weirdness is happening right now? Because the order of operations matters. See, right now we were rotating the object and then offsetting its position randomly. And because of that, we have this weird rotation. But if we switch them, if we first randomly offset it, then it'll be rotating in their space. Let's increase this to 250 perhaps. See, and now we can just have them floating and maybe also add some And now we have this kind of background objects just randomly rotating. And obviously here we can also add them so they rotate in other axes as well. So kind of convenient that way. That's what the time effector is used for. And that's really about it. Uh, the only other thing that's useful is, I guess that we can talk about, is that you can put cloners inside cloners. So this cloner, you can put them inside another cloner. Let's set them to linear and move them up. And as you can see, now we have more of them. And we can apply effectors to the individual clones or to the cloner on top. And it will affect each group of cloners as a clone. So if we add, for example, the step effector, oops, wrong one, step effector, you can see that's applying to each one simultaneously. But let's say we have, a, um, let's remove this. Let's apply the step effector to the top cloner. And now it affects the size of each kind of collection of clones in a cloner because this is treated as an entire clone. And yeah, that's about it. Stay tuned, next, in our next tutorial, we'll make a flower. And remember, if you need any more characters, we have a bunch of stuff on ace5studios.com. All these characters are animation ready, rigged, have materials, are fully customizable, and you can use them in your own commercial projects. We also have more stuff here, like some free rigs you can try out. We have character building kits. We have packs of simpler characters for infographics and infomercials and whatever it is you're making as kids. There's also some animals there, so go check it out. You won't be sorry.